हेलो एवरीवन एंड वेलकम टू सेंट एंड्रूज इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी एंड मैनेजमेंट सेंट एंड्रूज इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी एंड मैनेजमेंट इज द बेस्ट इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज इटली एन सी आर इन नदर इंडिया एंड एंटायर इंडिया वी प्रोवाइड बेस्ट क्वालिटी एजुकेशन वी प्रोवाइड हंड्रेड परसेंट प्लेसमेंट इट इज़ द बेस्ट चॉइस यू कैन मेक फॉर योर करियर और योर चिल्ड्रंस करियर द सब्जेक्ट इज प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग सी एस सी थ्री जीरो टू एफ दिस इज़ अ सी एस सी सिक्स सेमेस्टर सब्जेक्ट एफिलिएटेड टू एम डी यू यूनिवर्सिटी रोहत तक द टॉपिक दैट वी शैल बी लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू इन दिस इन दिस वीडियो विल बी कोकोमो दिस इज अ होरिस्टिक एस्टिमेशन टेक्निक स्टाफिंग लेवल एस्टिमेशन टीम स्ट्रक्चर्स स्टाफिंग रिस्क एनालिसिस एंड मैनेजमेंट एंड प्रोजेक्ट शेड्यूलिंग एंड ट्रैकिंग आई शालिनी फ्रॉम सी एस ए डिपार्टमेंट शैल बी टेकिंग यू फॉरवर्ड कोकोमो हॉरिस्टिक एस्टिमेशन टेक्निक हॉरिस्टिक टेक्निक बेसिकली यूजेज द कंसेप्ट ऑफ लर्निंग फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस प्रोजेक्ट एंड एस्टिमेट द कॉस्ट राइट सो दिस इज विद योर प्रायर नॉलेज दैट यू हैड फ्रॉम प्रीवियस प्रोजेक्ट राइट ऑल्दो इंटिवटिवली वेरी सिमिलर टू एक्सपर्टाइज बेस्ड टेक्निक्स हॉरिस्टिक एस्टिमेशन टेक्निक्स टेक अ डिफरेंट एंगल द ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू फाइंड अ सिमिलर सिस्टम प्रोड्यूस अर्लियर एंड थ्रू नॉलेज नोइंग हाउ द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द न्यू सिस्टम वेरी फ्रॉम द एग्जिस्टिंग वंस कोकोमा इज बेस्ड ऑन हॉरिस्टिक टेक्निक्स नाउ वी कम टू कोकोमो और कोकोमो वन कोकोमो इज कंस्ट्रक्टिव कॉस्ट मॉडल दिस वॉज प्रोड्यूस बाई बोहम इन नाइनटीन एटी वन According to him, software cost estimation should be done through three stages. That is the basic Kokomo, intermediate Kokomo, and complete Kokomo. The modes of development. There are three modes of development, based on the software size, innovation deadline, and constraint deadlines. And what are the three modes? Organic, semi-detached, and embedded. Kokomo model depends on two equations. One is development efforts; the other is effort and development time. So MM or man month, which is equal to A one K log A two and PM. So MM could be your man month, and PM is your person month. And staff month is one month of efforts by one person. So Kokomo consider one fifty two hours per person per person month. It may vary according to organization by ten to twenty percent. Effort and development time (TDEV). This is B B one star effort B two star months. T D T development is estimated time to develop the software, and it is expressed in months. And all these your A one, A two, B one, B two are constant, constant for each category of software products. Next we come to basic Kokomo. So this basic Kokomo it applies the parameterized equation without much detailed consideration on project characteristics. So you have your effort equation and you have your development time. Okay, we will see here. See here, you know what do we notice that this is dependent on one variable, right? So this is a one and a two, b one and b two. So this is basic Kokomo. Then you have for different values you have depending on whether it is in in which mode it is organic, semi-detached, and embedded, right? The development time estimation is also in two point five. Uh, this also depends for organic. It is two point five at first raised to the power zero point three eight. For semi-detached, this changes to zero point three five, and for embedded, changes to the power zero point three two. So basic Kokomo that is the person month curve. The effort estimation is expressed in units of person months. It is the area of person month plot. That is number of person working on the project on one side and time on x axis. So x axis you have time and y axis your number of person. See as the time progresses the number of persons increases and after reaching a peak value then it declines. Right. So this is how our graph is going. and this is the point that we have to note in here that it should be noted that effort 100 pm does not mean that 100 person should work from one month right no does it mean that one person should be employed 100 month but it denotes the area under person month curve in this curve we see that as project progresses 
the number of person working on it gets increases and as project reached near to its end the number of persons become decreases so role of every person is specific right intermediate kokomo the same basic equation for the model is used for 15 course drivers are related on a scale of very low to very high and they calculate the specific effort multiplier and each of them returns them an adjustment factor which multiplier yields you the effort adjustment factor only a1 is slightly different right so you have two in here right so man month's correction is there that is you divide the two and then you get it so it is very similar but just a little difference from it advanced or detailed kokomo both basic and intermediate Kokomo model considers a software product as a single homogeneity entity. However, most large systems contain several subsystems in which some may be organic, some may be semi-detached and some may be embedded. Example, an MIS may have a data path, a GUI part and a communication part. So the communication can be considered as an embedded software. And the data part could be semi-detached and GUI could be organic. So all this we can be estimated separately and then you sum the overall system. Right? Okay. Next we come to staffing level estimation. See what Norton said was that, that the project manager has to figure out staff estimation. From the effort required to develop a software has been determined. Right? So staffing like how much staff will be needed for a particular product so two scientists work in there northern and put on so the first one what he said was that that you know the project manager she has to figure out the staff estimation after the effort required right to develop a software and you determine that so the, he actually investigated on an r d project right and he studied the staffing pattern of r d projects and propose the staffing level patterns can be approximated by relay distribution curve, right? So he said that these person, the staffing pattern that we, we are observing in this R&D section or in this project, it is very, very similar to the relay distribution curves, which specified that the relationship between applied ef effort and delivery time for software project, right? So it is a applied effort versus delivery time of the project. And it is also called putman Norden Relay Curve or PNR Curve. He represented a relay curve by this equation, right? So this is a long, E is equal to K divided by T2 D star T same E T2 and then again 2 times T T2. So what are these? So this K gives the area under the curve, right? So this is by this T D is where in the peak as it attains its maximum value. Then you have different different points where different different one k is the area under the curve. So whatever the area that you take depending upon that and you have constants also at that point. Right. So this is the equation. K divided by T D ka square and this then again this is multiplied by T and then it is e to the power minus e. So it's exponentially it's decreasing. Right. Okay, next we come to Putnam works. See so Putnam he analyzed that characteristics of software development and staffing has some characteristics of R and D project studied by Norden. And relay Norden curve can be used to relate the number of delivered lines of code to the effort and the time required to develop the project. So he calculated it now based on the same formula that L is equal to C K then K uh, K1 divided by three D uh, four divided by three. So what he said was that, that K is the total effort expended in product development in person months, right? And L is your product size in kilo line of logs, right? This we discussed also, like K, okay, let's see how do we calculate it in a previous video. And TD is the time required to develop the software. So this will be the highest time that will be needing it. Then CK is the state of technology constraint and CK this is like if it is 2 for poor development it is 8 for good and 11 for excellent. So you have different different values for it. So you put in there and then you see like how many it has. Right. Next we come to team structure. You know team structure it addresses the issue of organization of the individual project teams. There are some possible ways in which the individual project teams can be organized. There are mainly three formal team structures, chief programmer, democratic and mixed team structure, right? So how do you organize your team? What kind of a structure you follow? 
actually gives you three leads to three formal structures into this so the first one is the chief and this is uh, this is all these are different because of the different complexity and sizes like some teams are large or sorry some projects are large and some projects are small so depending upon your need as to which project you think is uh, smaller than which model you need to put up in so you see that what is the complexity of the project what is the size of the project does it it do? then you fit in the like the kind of structure so first we come to first is chief programmer team see in this team a senior engineer will become the technical leadership and he will be the chief programmer see as the name suggests is like chief programmer so chief means it has lots and lots of power and programmer team is like it would be the head would be programmer right so the chief programmer partitions the task into small activities and assign them to the team members so he will be the one who will be delegating you the task and he also verifies and integrates the product development by different team members right so the chief programmer provides an authority and if this structure is more efficient than the democratic team or for well understood problem well understood are like if you are very well aware of to what exactly that you are supposed to do so your requirements like i again go back to my sdls if your requirements are very very clear and you have a very clear understanding and very clear picture about it so it is very very good for you actually right however the chief programmer team leads to lower team morale since team members work under the constant supervision of chief programmer this is very true so wherever that you are you are constantly being monitored you actually lose the environment because nobody wants somebody to be in a very very suffocating sort of an environment so this is very true so it leads to harassment of people and it really their morale at the end of the day decreases because their contribution is nothing right so it inhibits also original thinking because you or you it is just like taking a dictation right so you you don't have any original thinking or any critical thinking left in bit in 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 the way team members and the chief is subject to a single point failure which is also very correct like if, if it is fails then it is a mm, mm, i would say the blame would go to the chief programmer only right because he is the one who will be handling and he is not an, letting anybody to um, suggest anything or like advise anything to him so he will be the one who is carrying the task right so the so the i would say the blame game or blame will also lie on him and it is suitable for small projects small projects as well as well understood projects right next we come to democratic team the democratic team structure as the name implies does not impose any formal team hierarchy which is very true right so a, a manager provides democracy means everybody has a right so manager will have administrative leadership at different time different members will be, will be at the top of the hierarchy and the democratic organization lead to higher morale and job satisfaction and it suffers from less manpower turnover also democratic team structure is appropriate for less understood problem since a group of engineers can you know this is very well for when you don't understand the problem much because you can suggest something new or the other it is suitable for projects requiring less than 5 or 6 engineers and for research oriented projects for large scale a pure democracy will become chaotic right for large projects you cannot do because then it will go on and on and on and on and on right next we come to mixed control team organization the mixed team as the name implies draws upon the ideas of both democratic as well as chief programmer and this has incorporated both hierarchical reporting and democratic setup also so the mixed control team is suitable for large team sizes so this is very good where you have very large teams right uh, uh, because chief was good for well understood problems and where in this my size are very very small democratic is good where in the same team members of 5 to 6 because any and the project is, is more i would say moderate up to moderate size and this mixed will work you know, for very large teams right and for very large large projects so each democratic uh, set up their program a level attempt solution to a single part and thus this team organization is eminently suited to handle large and complex problem so this team is very popular and you know almost this has been used in various software it industries so this is all the diagram see in chief the project manager is at the top and the down and downward software engineers are reporting to him 
in democratic state communication path is from each and every direction it's two way communication right in mixed it is very nicely done see there is this uh, project manager it has senior managers and then it's, so it is subdivided and also these blue blue means that they can interact with each others and this see this uh, green one also have this dash line it means they can share with each other they can they can uh, they can put in their ideas which will be considered it's a uh, in, and this blue will also right so they, they can actually interact with each other so it becomes a mixture of the two next we come to staffing you know, when tasks are defined and schedules are estimated the planning effort has sufficient information to begin staffing plans and organizing a team the comprehensive staffing plan identifies the required skill and schedules the right people to be brought onto the project. Right? The right skill and the right people having those skills at appropriate time and released from the project when their tasks are complete. The comprehensive staffing plan it identifies the required skill and schedules the right people to be brought onto the project at appropriate time. At what time you need what kind of people, and when you are done, then you release the resources. That is, you release the personnel. So staffing deals with appointing personnel for the position and then you release them after your work is done. So what do you do in this? You define a requirement for personnel. You recruit. Recruiting is like identifying, interviewing and selecting candidate. Then you compensate and then you develop and promote agents. Then for personal planning and scheduling, it is helpful to have effort and schedule size of the subsystems and necessary com component in the system. Risk analysis and management. The risk management process, it includes risk identification, analysis, risk response planning, risk monitoring and control, right? So the risk analysis process, it's followed by the identification of risk procedures, right? So first you identify and then you see as to which category it falls onto. You'd analyze them, that which is, you do a qualitative and quantitative analysis of it. So in qualitative analysis, this is the process during which one prioritizes risk for further action by assessing their probability of impacting project development. Right? So what are the process, how it is done? You have risk probability and impact assessment. Then you impact risk rating matrix you make uh, like for the all the this risk that you assess. Then you make a matrix of them. Then you characterize these risks and then you risk urgency assessments and at the end you have an expert judgment opinion to look that everything is being done nicely and quantitative risk analysis process what it does it it aims to numerically analyze the possibility of every risk right so you want to quantify it so you need to assign a number so that it can become comparable and its effect on project objective as well as the degree of overall project risk. So this procedure uses several techniques and methods such as data collection and representational techniques to determine the probability of achieving project objectives, to quantify the exposure of risk and develop a size and cost assessment schedule. So what are the, how do you do this quantitative, you are interviewing stakeholders, then you have sensitivity analysis, you have expected monetary value analysis. You have modeling and simulation, you have cost risk analysis, schedule risk analysis and also you have expert judgment similar to the way it was in qualitative assessment. Okay. Next we prioritize the risk. So once we are done with this identification and analyzation, we come to prioritizing the risk. See not all risks are created equally, right? So you need to evaluate like um, how do you assemble when you, uh, to, to resolve you just you know you to see that how they are supposed to resolve it and when it occurs so at what time they will be occurring and how they will be solved uh, is there any other factor that I have to complete before I can actually solve this right so you can manage this by simply categorizing risk as high medium and low so you put a category onto them then you respond to the risk. So for each major risk identify, you create a plan to mitigate it. Like how do I mitigate this risk? Because you know, you have to look for it. So you develop a strategy, some preventive or contingency plan. You then act on the risk by how you prioritize it. Right. So you act according to the way that you have prioritized it. That this is the one that is a high priority. I need to look at it first. 
so monitor the risk so whoever owns the risk will be responsible for tracking its progress towards the resolution so you can have face to face meeting but some updates might be best delivered by mail and text right and they might even be able to automate some keeping the focus on the work so whatever that you have to see that which things you can actually do to monitor whether you need personal to monitor or you can actually mo- automate the process so this is how it is done next we come to oh sorry next we come to project scheduling and tracking see project scheduling is a tool to interact with what task need to get done and which organizational resources will be allocated to complete those tasks in what time frame so actually it is a tool wherein you actually see that it is being allocated nicely and these according to the allocation it is being done within the different within the specified time frame right so a project schedule is collecting data on all the work required to deliver the project on time the project schedule creates a model for the entire project to guide the work being done and to measure project sorry and to measure process against a fixed time table right because it is a schedule so your time is a very very critical thing in it it has to be taken into account if the project changes the schedule details and the task time requirements right so interdependency between different task and resources and your availability of resources including team members your time constraints and bottlenecks so you see all these things you know if the project changes the schedule details like this are all the four has to be looked into then the project tracking what it does you project tracking consists of balancing the project plan with the actual progress of the project so you actually try, try to track the project what is it is going before time or it is after time and what are the loopholes into it so track you actually keep a track of it so project tracking is especially important for organization with a track record of time and cost overruns particularly in the it enterprises so basic activities are you determine work done then the resources spent you compare the work done versus versus resources spent like how much work is done and how much resources that you have spent on it so that is your earned value analysis right so you have more work done so it is better and less response resources spent on more work done is absolutely very very better that is like earned value analysis how much you want and then you track your milestones these milestones are very important you know why because they'll help you reach uh, they will actually motivate you also and they'll keep you on the track okay so there are various important questions like what is a kokomo model and what are its variants what is intermediate kokomo model of cost estimation explain staffing or personal staffing right then you have what are the various team structures and describe it can be like differentiate also the team structures and then you have to describe then you have risk analysis and management you explain then you have you can dif- differentiate between qualitative and quantitative risk analysis then what are the different steps of risk management and describe project scheduling and tracking so this is how we come to an end of the first unit i hope you know really like it's informative to you and you really get something beneficial out of it all the best thank you